Okay, great. So uh, welcome to the session today on organizing the classroom with technology. Um, like I said, we're going to be using a couple of different apps today. So if people want to play along with this as well, obviously you can. Um, my name's Matt. Um, if you haven't joined into the sessions before, a little bit about me, um, a senior lecturer, obviously, at USW. Um, in context of today's sessions, as well as being a, an Apple professional learning specialist, um, I'm also accredited as a Seesaw Ambassador and Shobi Champion. It's great collecting badges for these different things. Um, it doesn't mean anything, it just means you get a nice little badge to put on a slide. Um, it does mean, however, that that um, I've, I've had additional training myself on how to use these applications. Uh, the purpose of today's session is really just to how to get started um, and just show people that the basic use of the tool um, for classroom activities. So like I said, we're going to be using uh, Seesaw, and Seesaw app comes in two forms. There's both a class app and a parent uh, family app. We'll talk about the family app. Um, it's a really, really useful tool um, in general. Um, but at the moment, uh, because all the children at home anyway, it's it's almost a null and void app. Um, and then we'll look at Shobi, and then we'll talk about Socrative as an additional application that links into Shobi to do some, some extra stuff. So like I said, I'm going to try and model this as much as possible and have people play along. So thinking about Seesaw then, Seesaw um, is a, a learning journal application. If you've never seen it before, it, it works very similar to how Twitter works really in terms of a, a flow of information where the teacher can set a, an activity and students can respond and it, it has that timeline kind of feel to it. Um, like I said, there's a classroom app, which is for the teachers and the students to engage with. And then there's a family app, which enables the work that's done in class to be sent home to a family member so that they can keep track of, of what's going on. So obviously from a school point of view, that's a really, really useful way to just develop homeschool relations. Um, at the moment, obviously with the children being at home, uh, everything really would be done through the classroom app. We'll go through settings because there's an awful lot of settings in here that, that need to be understood in terms of privacy. And then we'll, we'll sort of demonstrate a couple of uses. So I'm going to jump into Seesaw now. Now, if you have been able to download this, when you first open Seesaw, um, you will see a screen that looks like this. Um, and for today's purposes, I'm going to ask people to join as a student. So if you've already got the app and you've already signed in and you're in as a teacher, I'm going to ask you just to sign out, come back to this screen, say I'm a student. On the next page then, it opens up a QR scanner um, and you can then scan the QR code that's on my screen at the moment. That's going to add you directly into my class. Now, whilst I'm showing this, I'll leave this on the screen for a little bit for people to join in. This is one of the real benefits of Seesaw because the ease of joining a class is as simple as this. QR code, scan it with the app, you're in. That, that's it. There's no sign up. There's no um, adding email addresses. There's no adding passwords. This makes it a really, really useful tool. One, for young learners that might not be able to type, might not understand passwords, all of those things. But also for us in university, I find, it's a really quick way to just get people into a place where they can share thoughts and ideas in a digital world. So that's that's kind of the, the beauty of the QR scanner. So I'll leave that there just for a few seconds um, as people um, just grab hold of their, their apps and sign in. And like I said, if you if you can't sign in for any reason, it's absolutely fine, I, I will run this across two devices so i'll be able to uh, hopefully show you what the student would do and how that would impact on what the teacher would see okay so once you've gone through that it's going to ask you to add yourself now obviously i didn't know who was going to join in in a classroom you would have created your student list i've just put some random names in there and some random numbers just so people can assign themselves to a person really doesn't matter who you assign yourself to my Second device I've assigned myself as Clive, just for the purposes of the demo. Okay, so this is this is the Seesaw app. This is our class, and this is live. Um, a little bit about the anatomy of the app. Um, first of all, this is all my students listed here. You'll see that I've just kind of added in numbers for people, but those those names are further down as well. Just keeps it in in um, numerical and alphabetical order. At the top here, we have the option to add content. And from a teacher's device, I get this screen, which enables me to add more things. So I can add um, 
specific bits of information such as photo drawings videos and um, upload anything that's linked to my device from a camera roll or from other files um, add a note just a written note or add links so it could be a link to you know something else that you've done or some web research you've done or whatever it might be I can also assign activities, well, I'll come back to those a little bit later, and I can send announcements. Now the announcements section is really useful because if I do link the family app to this, it's a really quick way to send messages home to parents rather than having to send anything like uh, newsletters that might get lost in bags or emails that parents might not pick up. Um, this would send it as a notification to people's devices. Okay, so let's kind of jump in and have a look at how we would create a class first of all. So I'm going to come out of the class that we're all in and just go to the create new class section. And it is as simple as give your class a name, whatever it might be. Assign it to a level. Now this is Americanized, but, but runs pretty much the same as what ours are. So we've got our, our uh, pre-K, which is nursery and then kindergarten, first, second, third. Um, it really doesn't matter that much what which one you choose. I'm just going to tap other for this. Let's create my class. You can see this is now my class. Down the bottom, I can tap on add students. Now, this is quite an interesting thing at the moment. I'm going to choose how I want my students to join my class. Now, they're not, they're not necessarily going to have Google accounts, so I'm going to say no. This is your decision. In a classroom setting, chances are they're going to have shared devices. That gives you the QR code, makes it really easy to sign in. Whilst they're working at home though, they're probably gonna have their own device, um, be it internet on the browser or a mobile device. So you would actually choose one-to-one -one devices. And then I need to add in the students. Now you can type them in manually or you can just paste a list of all your students. So if you've got this on a, a document somewhere with your list of names, just paste it in and it will instantly create your class. Um, I will just add one person for now so you can see the next step. And then this is how you would join the class. So I can, on the screen here, there's a QR code and a code, the S-X-U-T-Q-L. Um, and it just basically, that's the exact approach that you can share to, to parents or students to join. So if I tap on print, here's a document that I could easily just email out to all parents to say, this is what you need to do to join the class. This is the QR code to scan when you first go into it, same as hopefully you did when you joined my class. And that's it. That's the simple process of setting up a class. So I'm going to go back to our class now. Um, we're just going to take a look at um, how I would then add a bit of information into this. So we're just going to start with a very, very simple activity. Um, I want you all to add a drawing of a tree. So go to the plus, tap on the drawing, and draw a picture of a tree. You'll see on the right-hand side, I've got a color palette. Down the bottom, I've got different tools that I can use to, to draw with. So I can change my colors. I'm just gonna quickly draw a tree. And then whilst you're doing that, if you are able to join in as well, on the left-hand side, there are some additional tools. And this is where it can be really, really beneficial in a classroom environment, as well as as a home learning environment. I can add some text to this. So I could label my tree if I wanted to. I can add a voice note. So this is just gonna record my voice. Hi, this is my, oops. Hi, this is my tree. I like my tree because it's a nice big tree. There we go. I'm not a poet. I can add that in and you'll see now that it's created it as a video. I'm now gonna tap on the tick. I'm gonna choose who I am. I think I said I was Clive, so choose Clive down the bottom. And this is really useful because you can, if this was a collaborative piece of work, so if I've got one iPad between several children and they're all adding a little bit of, of a drawing or adding their voices over the top, you can actually select multiple people here. So if it's a collaborative piece of work, I'm just gonna add this as myself. And then that's gonna to upload to my journal so you can now see that my picture is there now if any of you are able to join in what will happen on your screens as you add something is that that will come through to me as a teacher with a notification to say someone has uploaded something and i'm waiting for it to be approved so on my second device i'm just going to draw another very quick tree add that in 
And then what you'll see as I've just added that live is down the bottom, it now says two unapproved posts, which enabled me to review it. And I can see that people have uploaded um, a picture, which is great. And I can choose here to approve it or deny it um, and send it back. I'm gonna approve both of these. And then back in my journal, I can see that those have been added to that journal. Okay, so now I've got those uh, pictures on the screen. Okay, and again, at, at the moment, it's just got numbers or, or Clive added to it, but you'd see if that was a, uh, your student class, they would be able to add themselves to it um, and it would start creating that journal of all of their work. So that's a really, really simple way of adding things in. Now we've done it as a drawing, that could be a, a whiteboard um, that we use for maths. I could be asking certain questions of the class. They could document their learning, add it in here. That's just one way of them being able to add some stuff. If I go back to the plus, go back to my post student, again, this is the full range. So they can take a live photo, do a drawing, turn it into a video, you know, all of those kind of screen record processes, add a video, upload anything, and here's like lots of locations. So anything that I've pre-created that might be in my camera roll, so videos, uh, photos, etc., link to my Google Drive. So if a school is using Google Drive, there's a direct link there to any documents you might have created in Google Drive. Um, it will just add that as a link. And then other locations as well, such as iCloud, Dropbox, OneDrive, etc., etc., etc. So there is a place where any work that's being created could be stored in this way and shared with others. As we said, notes, that just loads a, a notes page, so you can type directly onto that. And then the final one is a link, which is just going to ask you for a, for a URL um, that you would just be able to add. So you go to a website, tap on copy link, tap on link here, it would instantly copy that, place that wherever you need to go. Really good if you're trying to share um, pre-existing content that you found on the internet that you wanted to share with anyone. So a really, really simple way for people to do that. Okay, let's have a look at adding parents into this then, because at the moment, that's a really, really beneficial tool. So this, again, is the class app. That's just for students and the teachers. If you want to add families to this so that the stuff gets sent home, we're going to tap on families. And you'll see that what this does is gives you an option very, very simply to create a way of letting parents know that you want to share some information. You can print paper invites. So if I tap on that, it's just going to process this. It's going to make a unique QR code for every single student. Now, what that means is when I send that document home to parents and they scan that QR code, they will only see the work of their children. Okay, so as you can see there, that handout PDF has been sent to my email address. I will have a unique piece of paper for every single student, which can then be individually sent home to the parents so they will only ever see their students' work. You can also go to view a sample email and this goes through the same process. This is what you need to do in order to join. And very quickly from the app, I can type in parents' email addresses and send that out to them. They would click on the link in this example choose their child, lets them create an account, and then I as the teacher have to approve that those parents are indeed linked to that student. So it, the levels of security in here are really, really good. Whilst we're on the note of settings, this is my page still, and I tap on the spanner in the top right, and here where it is where I have all the control for everything I want to do. So I've created my class, but I can now manage it in more ways. I can change the, the name, change the level. I can manage teachers, so I can invite additional teachers to this. They have access, obviously, to everything, so they can see all the students' work, they can see all of my feedback, however I'm using it. Really good if you are in a co-teacher environment. It's really good if you have um, teaching assistants in the classroom with you. Really good way for everybody to have kind of that transparency of things. Um, as I move down then, I can change settings for the students. Um, the class code one-to-one -one settings, that's how that I can very, very easily change it from, I, I've been teaching in my classroom with shared devices, they're now at home where they've all got their own device. I can change it to a one-to-one -one, um, access, which means that they would have a student code to access their own. Um, and that's a really good way to keep them logged in on their devices. I can also add more students, go into manage students and, and simply add an extra student in there or take students away. If I jump back in, this uh, there's a really useful tool in here 
Um, if they have uh, parent access, I would see their parents here. I can invite the parents directly, but also if there's a student that's left my class, I can remove that student really easily. You might have an issue with students um, commenting on each other's work. If we talk about the DCF and the understanding of, of um, being responsible online, you might not have covered that with your students yet. So enabling them to be able to comment on each other's work could actually be an issue. So you can turn off things like enable students likes, enable students to be able to comment. Um, and the, the really good one at the bottom, new comments require approval. If I want students to be able to comment, but I still am a little bit uh, unsure as to whether they're going to comment in the right way, I can see the comments uh, before they get released to the students. So you can have that kind of level of, of security on it as well. Again, some of the other options here, students being able to see each other's work. I think it's a really useful thing that students would be able to see each other's stuff and be able to comment and feedback, etc. But you might not want that for some reasons. Um, it might be that at this point, you just want it to be a one-way process between you and the student and not have students see each other's stuff. Uh, new items require approval. I think it's a safety thing. You know, students could upload anything and you don't really want that going into a, a live journal. Enable editing, that's a useful one. You can share pictures to students and have them um, edit them, you know, draw on top of them, add a comment to them. Um, and then uh, the, the sample student is just a place where you practice things. You have the same level of control with family members as well. So being able to um, have families, likes, comments, etc. Again, if you know what your students' parents are like, um, it's something that you might choose to turn on or turn off, uh, depending on whether or not you want them to be able to like their own students' work or comment on their own students' work. I've seen it done very well. I've also seen some very bad examples. A couple of other things just to highlight whilst we're here. The blog is a really good thing. So you can enable class blog. What that does is it enables you to very, very quickly post things to a specific blog page hosted within Seesaw. Um, and then that could be shared with a wider audience than just parents you select which things go into that blog. So um, an example being at the end of the week, you might choose one great piece of work from, from your students and put that on the blog and say, this is what we've been doing this week. It could be um, you know, any way that you want to share something in a place that goes further than just the family app. So this could be seen by grandparents uh, around the world. It's, it's going to have a URL. So it's a really, really useful tool. Um, and then the last thing to show you here is the folders section. This just helps you keep things organized. So if I go into manage folders, tap on new folder, and let's just say I'm gonna call one uh, literacy, and make that red, and add another one, call it numeracy, and that's gonna be blue. And what this then enables me to do is start to refine all of that work that people have given me. So for example, if I go to this picture of a tree, Underneath it, there's the folder icon, and I can now say that I'm gonna put that into uh, literacy work. And you'll see that that tags that as a piece of literacy work. Now, if you set this up in advance, when you add any future work in, you can ask the students to self um, classify their work, which actually is a really nice process because it enables the students to think about the thing they've done and see which areas of their learning they feel it fits into. Could be a piece of science work that they've done, but they've done some tables and graphs and they could then also highlight that this is numeracy work. I think it's a nice way for students to self-assess the things that they're doing as well. So really that's that's the simplicity of Seesaw. Um, as a teacher, if I tap now on uh, the, the piece of work by student number one, I can like that piece of work. I can add a comment. I can type in my comment and send that and that's going to send that back to that student as a, as a comment. I can also tap on the microphone and leave verbal comments as well. Again, one useful for students that might not be able to, to read yet, uh, be new to English and have that as an issue, or just the speed of being able to leave verbal feedback to, to someone on their work. Great piece of work. I love the tree. It would be nice to know if any specific animals live in that tree. You get the idea. Tap, tick, done, feedback given, it's there, it's recorded on that student's journal um, for them to be able to review in their own time. So again, really, really nice, simple process. And the last thing to just quickly have a look at here, if I go back to add, is the ability to assign activities. And if people are joined in with this, I'm gonna ask you to actually have a go. 
Now, within here, there are community activities and there are loads and loads and loads of activities that have been created by educators, uploaded to Seesaw, being uh, ratified that they are purposeful activities. Also across the top, you'll see the home learning stuff, obviously, because that's a main focus at the moment. But you can choose any of those. You can then uh, create your own if you want, um, and also you can create your own library of resources. So rather than having to go back all the time into the whole community, you can select which ones from the community that you think are relevant, and you can add those to your own library for you to be able to use as many times as you like. So let's say I'm gonna choose this one about my favorite thing about summer. I can choose that. I can then assign it to you as a class. Tap to sign. And then what happens is on your screen, you will now have an assignment activity assigned to you. So if you tap on activities, and you can then add a response to that as well. So if you tap on add response, you can then go ahead and, and draw something in that box. Now again, I'll very quickly just draw something just so that you can see roughly how it works. And again, if you have a chance, it'd be great if you could uh, draw as well. Don't worry too much about adding in the whole activity down the bottom. It says, um, you know, what write something in it. You'll see the process. I'm just going to speed through that process just so I can add that. And you'll see on my screen then I have um, one response waiting for teacher approval. I tap review. And then below I can see a list of all of the students that are in my class. And I can see that Clive has done a lovely picture of a parasol on the beach. And his favourite thing is the beach. And I can tap approve on that. I've marked it. I've checked it. Um, I can leave feedback on it, etc. Same as I did before. And then that just that's going to stay there on my on my activities list that, that that's been completed. So again, a really good way, certainly in, in the home learning environment we're at the moment, to set simple activities for students to be able to do. Um, but again, you know, I can see the uses for this in higher education as well as just reaching out to students and getting instant feedback on things and collating it all in one place. So I'll, I'll wait a second to see if anyone else wants to, to have a go and join in with that. No pressure if you don't want to. And I'm not judging people's artwork in this, but uh, you'll get the idea of, of add, adding activities. There we go. We've got another, another one here we can just have a good look at. Lovely. So lovely flowers growing. Tap approve. Could leave feedback, etc. As I said before, could add that to a folder. Uh, process is simple, but there we go. So we've got a couple of examples of, of activities added in. Oh, we've got another one there as well. So there we go. So that's that's the simple process. So that continues to, to build my, like I said before, it's like a Twitter feed over here. I can tap on individual students, have a look at their work. Um, if that was uh, multiple students doing the same piece of work, it would go into each folder, etc. So Seesaw is a really, really simple tool for collating work, sharing work with home, um, and assigning work out as activities. Okay, great. So that's Seesaw. Let's move on to Shobi then. Now Shobi works in a very, very similar way. So we'll go through the setup. This one is going to require you to create an account of sorts. You don't need an email address or anything. We'll talk briefly about inviting parents, how we can use this to evidence work, and then links to Socrative. And again, this really is a very quick overview of how this can be used. Um, and I'll point you in the direction of resources to find out more and more about this. Um, if it's something that interests you. So in Shobi, um, if you first open it up, you should see a screen like this, um, and we're going to go to sign up for free. Now, again, if on your device, you've already got an account, if you just log out, so you go back to this screen. So we're going to sign up for free. For the purposes of this, I'm going to assign you all as students. Obviously, if you're a teacher, you would choose the I'm a teacher, but we're just going to say I'm a student for this. You're going to sign up with a username. And then the only things you need to add in here is your first name, last name, create your own unique username and your own unique password. Don't put an email address in. You don't need to have an email address. And actually, um, it confuses things more um, down the line. It's useful because it sends you notifications about things. But to be honest, you're not going to want any of those notifications anyway. So first name, last name. Uh, username and password. And again, for the purposes of this demo, you don't even need to put your actual first name and last name. Um, Mickey Mouse, Minnie Mouse, Donald Trump, all of those, absolutely fine. It's just so that people can join the class. 
When you've done that, it's gonna ask you for a code to join my class, and I've just got that up on the screen there. And then I'll show you in a second when I go into the class how, how you generate these. Again, really, really simple, really straightforward. So the code there, G-V-L-W-A. And then once you go into it, this is what it looks like. So again, I'm showing you the teacher view. Um, I'm going to go through the whole setup process. So as a teacher, how would I create a class? So when I sign in as a teacher, I have the spanner in the top right. Ask me to create a new class. I give my class a name. Underneath that, it also comes up with a code. That's the code that I asked you to join before. Don't put this one in because um, this is just a practice one. Again, I can allow parent access. So what that does is allow the, the parents to be able to sign in and have a look at the work that's going on as well. And then that's it. I tap save, it's created a class. I'm gonna jump back into the class that I've got with you guys, which is this professional learning one. And let's just have a look at how this works. So spanner again, I can create a new assignment. Now I'm actually gonna step down to the new folder section first, because this is a new addition that Shobi have put in and it enables you to organize things very similar to how Seesaw works. If I tap on the new folder, then I can uh, title this as, uh, let's just say numeracy or something. So I'm just thinking about it, and I'll make that green. And what you'll see is it then creates a folder in my panel on the left-hand side, just to help me keep myself organized. Now, if you are a, a primary school teacher, you might have it as separate subjects. If you're a secondary school teacher, you might have it as classes, um, you might have it as different topics within the subject you're teaching. Uh, there's lots of different ways that you can set it up. It's just an organization tool. Now, if I go into numeracy then and tap on that spanner, this time I'm going to type new assignment. And then I just give my assignment a title. Now, I've used this with my um, undergrad students as well and get them to, to upload work because of the simplicity of the digital way of uploading work. Um, so on here, I'll just I'll just write test again. I can set the due date. When is it due? I can lock student access until a certain time. I can make it view only until a certain time, or I can open up for editing. What's useful here is that as soon as the deadline has passed, I can lock it so students can't go back in and make any changes. They also can't see anything in there, which means whilst I'm doing my marking, they can't see anything that's been done. And then second, it's due to be released. I tap on view, and then again, they can suddenly see everything. So again, just a, a process of creating those things in your classroom. I'm gonna come back out, and I have actually set you some assignments in here. So if you go onto the training tab, and go to completing a task. Great, we've got, oh, and Mickey Mouse is in here with us, great. Um, within here, on my screen, you can see, I can see all of the students. On your screen, you will only be able to see the activity. So this is, this is the kind of personalization of this. As the teacher, I can see everything. As the student, you just see the activity itself. So what I do is I go into the shared item section, and I add in those things. So I'm gonna go through how to add these in just a second. Um, but just to kind of reiterate that point, students cannot see each other's work, which makes it a really, really useful tool for assessment. So let's just take a quick look at some of those processes. To add anything in, very similar to Seesaw, I tap on the plus. And these are the things that I can add in. I can add in a photo, I can scan documents, go to my photo library and add in anything that I've created before, voice notes, grades, files, and quizzes. So let's go down them one at a time. Camera, obvious, it's me taking a photo, me taking a video, being able to upload that to students. If I go to scan document, what this is gonna do is open up my camera, but instead of it taking a photo, it's going to scan the document. Now the benefit of scanning a document overtaken a photo is it's a higher resolution. So just gonna, I'm connected to my device so I can't pick it up too high. I'm just gonna, uh, there we go. Take a shot of this. Um, and you can adjust it if it didn't take the picture perfectly. And the idea here is you're just getting rid of some of that background that you might not want. I'm gonna tap on keep scan, and then I'm gonna tap on save. 
and that's going to add that then into my shared item items um, with you guys and whilst that's just uploading oh no we're there it was quicker um it says library photo so i can tap and hold on it and tap rename and i'm going to say this is our weekly plan and then actually i'm going to ask you now to go into this and we'll see that next step. So if I tap on weekly plan, if you go to the, the one that I've just recently added for you, you'll see what we need to do here. Hopefully you can see that you've got access to this straight away. So that's how speedy this is. And then what I want you to do is just, just write anything down. It doesn't really matter what it is. Along the top, you have a set of, of tools. So we have a pen tool, highlighter tool. Um, you also can add in voice notes. You can add in uh, bullet notes so in the form of like a, a speech bubble or you can add in like a, a longer piece of text if you want so this is lots of different ways and you can add things in however you choose to do it um, i'm going to do this on my second device as well so that we can see the process um i think what i'm going to actually write in here there we go and then once once I'm done, once I'm happy with that in, in a variety of ways of, of adding in, I just have done in the top left corner. And then that's my sheet completed. Um, on my screen as the teacher, next to where it says done, I also have a list or a, a image of people's heads. And I can actually see everybody's screens. Okay, so if I go to mine, this is what the other me did on my other device. You can see that I can uh, see what's been written directly on the screen. If I tap next, I can go to Mickey Mouse's. See Mickey Mouse is having tea and biscuits, which is great. I can go to Alice's and she hasn't filled it in just yet and go back to mine. So it just quickly goes through and layers the work that's been done by the individuals. Now I can also mark that. So let's say I'm gonna add a comment. I think I'll say um, lazy, whatever it might be and very, very quickly mark that student's piece of work in, in various different ways. Let's go up here then to Karen's. Uh, this time I'm going to leave um, a voice note. So again, I've tapped on the, the icon at the top, which is the voice note. Tap on the screen. Ask me to use the microphone. Tap record. I bet uh, you're looking forward to the Sunday when you get to have chocolate then. Tap save. And then that's just going to create that voice note and add that directly back to that student's piece of work really, really quickly, really quick, uh, very efficient way of giving instant feedback on students' work. Now, yes, this is great for home learning. This is also really good in the classroom to give instant feedback on students' work um, in a place where it's going to be stored as well later. And again, it can be digital work. It can also be um, just taking a photo of a piece of work that you've done. But rather than having everything documented in books, We've now got a digital portfolio, which is a lot easier for students to keep a record of. And also remember, we have that link back home to parents as well. So I'm going to come out of that, tap done, and just highlight here on the left hand side, you'll see that I now have paper clips next to people's names. That means that they've done the work. The blue, which means I haven't looked at their work. And if I just highlight Mickey Mouse's, um, on, on Karen's, you can see the red circle. Uh, that means it's been marked. So it's a, a place for me to be able to check on the things that the students have been able to do. I can see that I've given feedback in certain places um, and it's it's documented all of that. If I tap on Karen's, for example, you'll see that on her work there, there is a, a mark on the weekly plan saying it's been done. Now, Within this, I can also give individual feedback or task setting. So I'm going to go into the shared item and I'm going to say, um, I need you to access the presentation and make notes. So that's my post to everyone. You'll see instantly that should pop up on your screens. And this time I want you to go into the organizing your classroom. That's a keynote that I've uploaded. And I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing. And you'll see that what this has allowed me to do is upload an entire keynote presentation. Actually, it's the one that I'm sharing with you now um, with a few edits to it. And again, you have those tools at the top. You can draw all over it. You can make notes on it. Um, so just, just choose a slide and just make a note on that slide just so um, we can see what's been done on there. I'll do the same on my other device. Second. And 
again when you when you're done just a couple of marks or not again i'm not marking what you're doing just make a note on there i'm gonna jump back in tap on those heads at the top choose my other device you'll see that i've i've made some notes on there again Check through other people, see if anyone's made any notes. Now, this is the, the interesting bit because um, you might have made notes on any of those pages. So what's useful here is, can you see the pen to the right-hand side of that presentation? If I tap on that, I, it actually tells me what people have done. So Karen has made a change on page one. So if I tap on that, it will take me to Karen's page one, and I can see that she's made a very brief note colored half of the zero in on there. But again, from an organization point of view, that's really easy for me. Um, I can then give some feedback to Karen. I think you need to do more. And I can post that. Now, that bit of feedback only goes to Karen. So if I go to the shared items, you just see the stuff that's shared with everyone. If I go to Karen's, you'll see that I now have a private dialogue between me and the student. So a great place for you to be able to provide that feedback to those students in a really, really simple way. So we've looked at marking, we've looked at how to distribute tasks. If I go back to plus, um, I can leave voice notes, similar to Seesaw that we looked at before. If I just wanna very, very quickly give some feedback. Great work, I think you've been working really hard over the course of this Shobi session. Um, hopefully this comes in useful to you and then post, and you'll see that that is a really, really quick and easy way to um, give verbal feedback to students, um, you know, whether they speak English or don't speak English. It's just a quicker way for us to mark. There's also such a thing as curiosity. Um, I know that a lot of my students don't necessarily always read the feedback we give, but there's something around um, a little voice note there that might entice people to play it and then engage a little bit with the feedback. Now, also, any of you can leave voice feedback from me as well. So you can go onto your device. I'm going to do this on my other device. You can also have a go if you like. I'm going to tap on the plus, and I'm going to tap on voice note, and I'm going to leave a little voice note from the student's perspective. Thanks for all of the input in the session. It's been great. And tap post. And then if I go into my other device here, and just refresh that you'll see that I now have that voice note, which has been shared instantly with me uh, from my other device. So again, the, the speed that this works is really, really simple. I know I'm sat next to my other device, but the people that have been uploading things aren't sat in the same room as me. Um, and you'll see that the speed of just sharing those things is really, really simple. Okay, last thing to just briefly show you, um, well, actually two things. I can grade work. Now you can then give a score out of, X, Y, Z, however many points, and give comments. So again, certainly from a university point of view, it's a really quick and easy way for me to be able to uh, provide feedback to those students on the work that they've done. Um, again, I'm looking at this as a multimedia tool in terms of uploading things. Score, total, comments. Um, it's easy for you to add videos. You know, there's no um, file length size or anything. If you need to do something which is of a particular size, you can always store it in the cloud because it also links easily to the cloud. So the last thing to add is just to really show you something. I can also add um, a quiz into this as well. So if I go back to that shared items, tap on plus, go to quiz. There's another app which is called Socrative. Now, the only precursor to say to this is you. this is something that you would pay for as a, as a school or an institution. Um, but what it enables me to do is within Socrative, I've created some quizzes and I can tap assign. I can assign these then to my students. I can say I want it to be instant feedback. Um, I want it to be teacher paced, however you want to assign those things. Um, I'm gonna say instant feedback, tap start. And what this then does, you'll see this instantly come up on your screens is it's assigned a quiz to you. So on your device, if you tap on start quiz, it will load that quiz within Socrative and it will run through, it will run through those quizzes for you. So again, you know, don't worry too much about what you're answering. Just, just go ahead and, and add those things in. And then what I will show you on my screen as the teacher is how I can track that progress that people are doing. 
you'll see that I'm not doing particularly well, but I am just guessing. So just to show you what it looks like on the screen. Although I could probably guess a little bit better and try and get some right for the output one that. So again, instant feedback for the teacher in terms of generating all of that feedback on the screen that I'm sharing with you guys. You can see my answers on the screen. Um, you can you can see the areas that I might need to improve on, you know, the percentage I've got right, percentage I've got wrong. Um, and what it also enables me to do as a lecturer or teacher, whoever you're using this, is assess like students' ability to retrieve knowledge. Okay, so it's a fairly simple, straightforward quiz at the end of a session. Could be an exit quiz to just ask, you know, what have you understood, what have you not understood. Um, but again, it just it just documents all that stuff in a very, very quick and easy way. Now, my worry is here that some people are taking this too seriously and actually trying to get the right answers. I think I've proved to you that it's okay to just put the wrong answers for this one. Um, so I'm going to actually end the quiz now. So I'm going to tap finish. And again, this is the, the beauty of this and the reason why you would have this within Socrat uh, within Shobi and not as a standalone thing. Socrative is a separate app that you can use absolutely fine. The beauty of having the pro paid version is that it, it actually adds all of that information in a really, really nice, simple way and enables me to then be able to collate all of that information. Um, and also for each one of the students, it instantly then gives you your quiz results. So you can check what you knew, what you didn't know. Um, obviously, it takes out the names, etc. Um, and it will also... Um, in a, in a few moments, it will generate um, some initial feedback for each one of those students as well. So again, really, really simple way to create those things. So that's that's really it as an overview. Just again, very conscious time. These are only meant to be half an hour sessions and we're on 45 minutes. I don't want to take up any more people's time. Um, but that is a very, very brief overview of Seesaw and Socrative. Just to kind of finish up, to have a look at some of the comparisons because some people say well is it one or the other or would you use both um i would probably always err on it. there's no harm in having both of them um the class the the seesaw class app is really really good and easy to join with a qr so it's it's one of those instant feedback things shobi offers for me a little bit more in terms of the assessment tool being able to manage things quite easily see progress over time um they both link to multiple platforms. Um, Shobi allows you to mark work within the app and actually annotate directly on things. Um, Seesaw allows you to, to tag multiple people and have peer assessment. So again, courses for courses really depends on which one works best for you in your classroom setting. As always, uh, please uh, follow me on Twitter, follow South Wales um, Apple RTC on Twitter, but also today just highlight Seesaw and Shobi they are sharing an awful lot at the moment about how to use their platforms with user guides and other expert tips, etc. So if you're not following them, they're really good uh, to follow. And if you do have any other questions, please do get in touch. You can drop me a message on Twitter. You can drop me a message through uni or, or any of my other email accounts. Um, and it'd be great to, to help people in how they might use these in their own teaching. So hopefully that was useful today. Apologies, it's run over a little bit, but there's probably a lot to, to cover. Um, and I will see people tomorrow for the video session, which I think is at one o'clock as well. If you can make it, great to see you then. Thanks a lot.